This is the Sales Gravy Podcast. I'm Jeb Blunt, best-selling author of Fanatical Prospecting Sales EQ, Objections and Inked, and I'm here to help you fill up your pipeline, close bigger deals, and rock your commission check. Welcome back to the Sales Gravy Podcast. On this episode, I have the women that your mother warned you about, Gina Tramaco, Rachel Pitts. And before we get started, I've got this great insider group. It's an amazing opportunity for people to connect directly with me. And yes, it really is me on the other side of the text message. Gina, I think you can, uh, can, true. You can true, uh, count true. me, count for, or what do you call it? Um, vouch for you. Vouch for that. Mm-hmm. We're going to vouch for that. So, <laughs> but it's, it's all, I love it because every morning I wake up, I got questions from people and I'm able to respond to them directly. And they love it. People have asked me, is that really Jeb responding? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it is. So here's how you get, here's how you get in. You just text hi Jeb or anything you want to sales gravy. You can text Gina. It doesn't make a difference, but text to 706-397-4599. 706-397-4599. And I'll, I won't spam you. There's not a whole lot of promotion going on. It's just people having conversations with me outside of the, you know, the judgment of all the people on social media. And I'm, I'm just really digging it. It's the closest I've ever been to my fans and, uh, and Gina's on. So it's, it's awesome. So the reason that I asked you two on today, because you have this amazing podcast called The Women That Your Mother Warned You About. I've been on a couple of times, and there's two things I want to talk about today. First of all, I want to hear your story. Like, how did you have the idea to build this podcast? What have you learned from podcasting, and how has it helped you in your business? And then the second thing, and this comes up a lot in their insider group. So people ask me questions about getting coaches and should I have a coach? is have you ever had a coach in your life and, and and what like what would you give advice to people who want a coach like what what advice would you give them about finding people in their life that can help them mentor coach them to get better we've got about 20 25 minutes we're going to run awesome. so why don't we get started let's start with uh the, with you guys tell me the story of how you started this crazy podcast the women <laughs> that your mother warned you about and and, and like what's it about and like how how's it helped you in your business? It's interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna start it and then I'm gonna hand it off to to Rachel because of the two part question because this is important the coaching piece of it because Rachel started out as my coaching client. That's how we know each other. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let Rachel take it from there. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> so it started out that I started stalking Gina on Facebook, frankly. And, and she was posting photos of her actually coaching, doing group coaching with people. And so I reached out to Gina and asked her about what she did. And, and Gina was really the first coach that I hired since then. I've had, a, I always have had a coach and now I, right now I have multiple coaches so we can get back to the coaching thing in a minute, but I reached out to Gina I was at the time uh, and in real estate and I wanted to get out of real estate because I wanted to create a fitness business because that was one of my passions. And now I do both, of course. <laughs> but um, And one really great thing that Gina did in terms of sales is we talked about it. And of course, I was my objection was a sale was a price objection. I was like, oh, God, that's too expensive. And I scurried away. Let me think about it. And then Gina followed up and it was her follow up was this. Hey, I was just thinking about you. How are you doing? And I <laughs> went, Oh my God, I've been thinking I can't stop thinking about you. And I just I found the money and I'm in. And that was pretty much how it happened, right, Gina? Yeah, uh, pretty pretty much. I just kind of pulled so, away from you and let you ruminate on it. But I I watched you following me, which are buyer cues. Like I watched you liking my things on social media and found the right moment to be like, hey, how are you? <laughs> and then perfect. you were putty in my hands. Yep, I was. And I was, that was it. And it's interesting because I did, I didn't have the money and then I found the money. So there you go. People do that. And then Gina was my coach for a couple of years. Um, I did transition to a full-time fitness business. And then life happened, and then I transitioned back into real estate. Um, and then we moved apart on things and just did our own businesses. And then we just missed each other and started getting together and having breakfast by, you know, because we, we understood that we were women who were out there grinding away, super type A women, super achievers. And that, that's some people kind of hated, place. some people didn't like us. 
Yeah, yeah, well, that's how it goes. But but we knew it's kind of a lonely place for women, and that's one thing we talk about in our podcast is it's a lonely place to be a super achiever because everybody thinks you have everything together, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's very, very hard, as any super, cheap, super achiever knows. Um, and so we had breakfast for a f- and just exchanged business ideas and our woes and our achievements. And then Gina, Gina at the time had her other uh, podcast, the, time, the, pivot, right? the Pivotal Leader. Sorry, The Pivotal Leader. And she suggested, oh, we should, first she suggested we should have a TV show and get an <laughs> RV and travel the country. And I said, nope, not doing that. <laughs> so then it sort of backpedaled to, how about a podcast? And then the next meeting we had, we were brainstorming, what should we call it? And I think Women Your Mother Warned You About came out pretty quick. And we're like, that's pretty good. And let's see if we find something better. And then we didn't find anything better. And so Women Your Mother Warned You About was born. It's a, it's a great title. I mean, something that sticks. Pivotal Leader or Women Your Mother Warned You About. Like, it's a, it, just the wordplay on that. Let me go back to something because you you said that, you know, there, people hated us. So talk to me about how, as high-achieving women, you've turned your haters into motivators, uh, as energy, as drive. Do you want to take that or you want me to take that? Well, I have, uh, well, my haters have actually helped me into my latest transition. Um, So I am a unique person. I am a powerful personality and I've spent a lot of time trying to fit into the normal, right? I've tried to be conservative in real estate and now in mortgage and, and dress the part and, you know, cross my arms across my chest like I'm supposed to in the photos in my business suit. And then I found out that I still have haters that think I'm weird and think I'm too loud and think I'm too bold anyways. So of late, I have decided to not be normal anymore and just turn the crank up thanks to those haters and just be even more outside the box. And now I just went through my closet and pulled out all my crazy costumes and outfits and and it's it makes me so happy to be this weird. And And the truth is that haters haters are great especially if they're going to hate directly on your page like yeah. <laughs> like because then if people hate on you then the ones who love you the people who follow you and just adore you for who you are and what you do they're going to come and support you and i think we've we so, have found that through our podcast we have women who message us about how much we impact them and change them and inspire them and motivate them so the focus has to be on those who love us not on those who hate us well, it does, but you also have to pull out the authenticity, who you are. That's why exactly. I like the women your mother warned you about because it's like it's kind of an in-your-face moment. But but I can tell a story about Gina. We had Gina in the <laughs> studio, and she and Trey were in the back shooting some promo videos. Remember this? So I walked in, and they're in there talking about – I don't know what the hell they're talking about, but it's not like – it's not Gina. Like, it's not the, what I wanted. So I go in, and I, I basically – I yell, cut! You know, and I'm not, I'm not the director, and I'm like, stop. And I'm like, we're not doing this. And I, I turned their entire, you know, cart upside down, and I'm like, we need to see you. Like, we go, I want to see the part of you that everybody leans into, the laugh, the smile, that part. And I think that's one thing that, I don't know, this is not a man or a woman thing. I think one of the things that we miss sometimes is, is being authentic, right? Being yourself. And now I think important to understand that authenticity without respect for your audience is arrogance. So you have to, you got to understand that who you're dealing with, you can't just step over that line, but but people dig authentic you. They also Mm -hmm. hate authentic you. And usually they hate authentic you because they really want to be like you, but they can't be because they're afraid. So instead of just admitting it to themselves through cognitive dissonance, what do they do? They start throwing rocks at you. Yeah. And, and I think that's what makes you two so unique. I've been on your podcast before and you make me say bad, bad things and then, you know, and then I get yelled at from my wife. So, but, but that's fun. So let me, let me throw two things at you. So you, you, can, you can bounce these off each other. When people come to me looking for coaches, mm-hmm. I would say that 80% are women who come to me directly and say, can I find a coach? And I don't do any personal coaching. So I do no personal coaching. i got people on my team, people like Gina who do coaching. Uh, and, but a, a lot of them are women and a lot of them are like you, like they're, they're a level women. Like why, why do, you know, why do these a personalities, these, these high performers come looking for help in particular? And, and what is, what's the key for, for women who are like you for remaining true to who they are 
and being authentic and and not allowing themselves, to, like you said, Rachel, to get kind of pulled into that. Everybody expects you to be this way, so be this way. How do you do that? And and and, and like keep your sanity and in, in like in the world around you. I'm going to go a little bit backwards on that. How do you stay in that and be open and authentic? And you have to be vulnerable and you have to be willing to be vulnerable. And you have to surround yourself with people who that you can bounce off of that are going to support that. So you have to be a woman who's or a man who is really wants that and, and be open to it and to ask for help and to be OK with it. We often talk on our show about imposter syndrome. Right? People go into that mode of I don't think I'm good enough. And you just have to. I don't know. For me, it's surrounding myself with people who keep me going. The women your mother warned you about. I hope you're enjoying the podcast and we'll get back to it in just a moment. But first, there's a reason why thousands of sales professionals leverage Sales Gravy University to learn, grow and gain a competitive edge. On Sales Gravy University, you'll find hundreds of self-paced courses from top sales trainers plus and this is what makes us different. We offer dozens of live virtual courses taught by our master trainers each month. There truly is nothing else like it out there. Go check it out for yourself today at learn.salesgravy.com. That's learn.salesgravy.com and use the code free course to get your very first course for free. Now back to the podcast. I'm going to go back to the piece where, Jeb, you asked about why do super achievers need coaches? So I've got one of my coaches right now is a really great coach through the mental management program that was created by Lanny Basham, and he was an Olympic sharpshooter. And their their program is about it's mental management. It's mindset management. And what is so profound about that to me and the reason that I have them is if you think about an Olympic athlete, let's pick Michael Phelps. And so how many coaches do Olympic athletes have? Lots of coaches that Mm -hmm. are, that are, they're super achievers. And yet, even though Michael Phelps is probably a little bit out of the limelight since he had such achievement, he's still got coaches. He's had coaches since he was young. They analyze what you're doing. They, they help tweak what you're doing and they help you see what you're not able to see because you're in the middle of doing your activity to the best of your ability. And that's one reason that I love having coaches um, because even starting with Gina, it, a coach helps you see what you can't yeah. see yeah. and then help. And a great coach is not going to tell you how wonderful you are all the time. They're going <laughs> to tell you, Hey, your numbers are not good here. You need to work on this. This part is why you're falling short on your goals. And that is a very, very, very important so that you can reach your goals. Cause it's just when you're, it's like the forest, you can't see the forest for the trees, right? And a coat, a great coach helps you to really see the big picture and mostly see where you're getting a little off track. And I think people who get, especially women who get coaches, the ones who step up and raise their hand, they're ready for something bigger and they've been figuring out how to get it. And they've heard that someone can help them get there. So they're, they're willing to go there. I had one, uh, one of the insider group members come to me this morning on a text message and said, I want a coach. I'm looking for a coach, but I'm so overwhelmed. I don't even know know where Mm -hmm. to start. Mm -hmm. So I think that I think part of it is when you're a high achiever and you're competitive, yeah. like you see the world ahead of you and you say, I can accomplish all yes. of these things. Yes. And you're you're pulled in all these different directions. And a, what a coach helps you is narrow down and align on where you want to go. And and it's a, it is about provoking awareness. Like if I can if I can be aware of what I can't see in the moment, then I can change it. If I'm not aware of it, I can't see it. And in a lot of cases, when you're in the middle of performing, you just can't see the the, oh, the forest yeah. for the trees, essentially. One hundred percent. So I think that's I think that's one of the keys, and I think that, that we you know the misnomer that a coach is going to be an easy button is going to solve all your problems mm-hmm. is that's not the case. What the coach does is the coach shines a light on the path that you were meant to take, and and because they're shining that light, it makes it a whole lot easier to move down that path faster than if you were trying to find it by yourself by bumping into a bunch of walls until you found the right way to go. Yeah, and a coach is going to keep you on the path and keep you from distraction. The one thing that Rachel and I used to joke about all the time is her problem with squirrels, right? She's chasing squirrels, and my job was to always get her back on the path of less squirrels. Yeah, I'm a bad squirrel chaser. I taste squirrels during my keynote sometimes. I'm like sitting there, and all of a sudden it's like squirrel, and I can't remember what I was going to say. 
That happens all the time. So yeah, it is, it is good to have someone that can that can get you back on track. But also, what a coach helps you do is build the track. Yeah. Because if yeah. you don't have tracks and you're off track, you have no idea, right? So a coach also helps break through delusion. And w one of the things mm. that we say at Sales Gravy all the time is you cannot be delusional and successful at the same time. So, like, tell me about like those hard conversations where you know you're you're like you're 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 in complete delusion and the coach has to like grab a two by four and whack you in the forehead did y'all ever have any of those moments huh did we? i'm sure that we did <laughs> <laughs> well and especially you know one thing about a coach they can help you see where you're going wrong help you build the track help all, all the things that we've mentioned so far a coach is not actually going to do the work for you right so the, the good whack across the forehead, it comes when, let's just say Gina and I, going back to when she was coaching me, she would say, go do this, go do that, make sure you take care of this. And then the next time we meet up, I haven't done these things because I was off chasing some squirrels. Well, that's when a coach has to whack me across the forehead and, and mention, hey, you want to reach these goals? Yeah. Well, I told you, you need to do this and you need to do that. So again, to reiterate, a great coach is not going to do the work for you. The coach is going to tell you what you need to do to swim the laps better in Michael Phelps analogy, but the coach is not swimming the laps for you. So let me, let me, let's address that real quickly, because I think this is super important. And this is what I tell people all the time. Look, there are coaches everywhere. You can hire a coach and I do, you can find people in your life that will coach you. It could be your boss, could be someone that, you know, could be, you know, someone that's a peer. But the thing about coaches is coaches love to coach. And the reason they love the coach is they love to see you succeed. Coaches are not the star you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you're not making progress, they lose the will. They lose the desire. They lose the yes. passion to coach you. You have to be doing things. So if you don't honor the commitments that you make to your coach, eventually, whether you've hired them or whether there's someone that is just volunteering to help you out, eventually they will go away because they get no joy when you're not making progress. I want to chime in on that because it's so extremely important because it's not just about you hiring the right coach. As a coach, I don't want to work with someone who doesn't want to put in the work, who isn't driven, who isn't coachable, because it's it drains. I feel like I'm not going to be successful to help them when they're not coachable. Love it. Okay, so we're, we got to wrap up. and But I want to go back to Thelma and Louise. I mean, sorry, Rachel and Gina. <laughs> In the RV, driving across the country, right, just causing havoc, podcasting in small towns all across America. <laughs> Let's wrap up with a couple of things. So, <laughs> so having a podcast, doing this, what has this done for you? Just give it, just give me that. Just in maybe in, in a short, you know, paragraph. Like, what has this meant to you to have this podcast together? <laughs> Well, I mean, it's strengthened definitely our, our friendship, and that's a whole other story because we've had situations where we've had to learn because we almost broke up over the summer, um, and we're, we're, we didn't. So we've had to learn a lot about being partners and business partners, for one. Um, probably my biggest um, achievement here is I work for you now. <laughs> I was about to say, that would be the biggest achievement for Gina. I, I mean, I would say, I mean, the podcast did lead to me being here. Well, the podcast was great for connecting with people. Yeah. If you think about it, right? Rachel, what about you? What has the podcast done for you? Well, I've found that the, the greatest benefit of having a podcast is it's sort of like having a book. Writing a book and, and also it. developing a podcast is not – it's not easy. It's not just like click, boom, you're done. It takes a lot of work yeah. and it takes a lot of commitment. And so when I you know tell people that I have a podcast – they're like, oh, that's so cool. Like it's it's kind of like a an, it's an achievement slash calling card where people can get to know me better um, and 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 check out what what I'm all about and what Gina's all about. And we also have amazing guests. So it's been really instrumental in in just, hey, this this chick can get stuff done and she's getting stuff done. Because, again, as you know, Jeb, because you're very prolific in writing books, it's like it takes a while to get that 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 groove and figure out that you can actually get to the finish line and make something like this happen. I do think it teaches you persistence and sticking with it. I've been podcasting since 2007 when podcasting Beginning. wasn't even cool. And, and now mm -hmm. podcasting is everything. So, so it, it, over time you build an audience that's loyal and it, and it's not something that happens instantly. 
one of the pieces of advice that I give to people, if you want to you know, start a podcast, it's the, the, the nice thing is you can go interview people. When you interview people, they're talking, you're listening, they start to love you for it, and then they connect with you. Yeah. And it's a it's a really wonderful way to open up doors that you didn't have before I, I just by giving someone that, that a That is stage. the biggest piece of it, and that's what I learned in my first yep. podcast with The Pivotal Leader is all the connections I made with people in the C-suite and then the continuous connections that we make with people that it's just crazy. I love it. I'm just having an idea. Maybe we should have a, like a women your mother warned you about mastermind group on Sales Gravy University. How cool would that be? Ooh, so we've then, we've yeah. talked about yeah, doing a like mastermind like all of these group. like high powered women, you know, who want to turn haters into motivators can get together yeah. in a group, small group. We've uh, we've actually I've, I've actually heard some women um, ask if we have mastermind groups at Sales like Gravy. It. Well, we could figure that out. Okay. So, <laughs> the women your mother warned you about with Gina and Rachel you can go get the podcast on Apple, on Spotify, on Google, everywhere, everywhere podcasts are. Go check it out and go listen to it. And then if you've got some questions you want to ask these guys, I can send them over to you. You can connect with me directly on my insider group. This is a text messaging group. Just text Hi Jeb or text the women your mother warned you about. I don't care. Text anything to me at 706-397-4599. That's 706-397-4599. If you got a question, if you got, we want more information, Information about a proposed the women your mother warned you about mastermind <laughs> group or coaching or if you've got some ideas for a future podcast episodes just shoot them to me and uh and i'll answer you gina and rachel thank you so much for the time that you spent with me today on the sales gravy podcast i'll see everybody on our next episode